Oh, dear. Have you read this, John? No, what is it? Just all the stories of violence and fighting in the world. It makes me feel sick, it does. I just don't understand how a man can do that to his fellow man. It's all very unchristian. Don't you think so, John? John? Yeah, yeah, whatever. You're not even listening, are you, John? Sorry, dear? What were you saying? Oh, hello, Harry. You're back early. Didn't have too many letters to deliver today, Suze. Well, you better come in and have a cup of tea. I'll tell you all about the excitement that's happened in my day. Hello. Can you help me? Depends what you need help on. Are you folks lost? Need some directions out of here? Well, no. Well, sort of. Yes. Uh, I'm looking for a house. I saw the bike and so I assumed you were from the area. Oh, as long as it's local. I'm afraid I'm not that familiar with any place outside Maiden Hollow. Well, I'm, I'm looking for the house of Terry Blackwell. Do you know him? Oh, I did used to know him. But if you're here for the funeral, you're a bit late. We buried him this morning. Oh, I, I know, I know. I, I tried to get here for yesterday, but I got bogged down with work commitments. You know what it's like. Not really. I don't like it here. How can you even say that? You haven't even stepped out the car yet. You're always so negative about everything. You need to be more open-minded. I think it seems quite nice here. Sort of quaint. Like something off a Christmas card somewhere out of an old-fashioned movie. I bet there are loads of large woods for me to explore. Lots of parts of forest that no one's ever been before. I can't wait to get out and have a look around. Are you relatives or something? Yes, I, I'm his daughter. And my children are in the car. We're here to clear the house out. Trouble is, I haven't been here for years and I, I can't actually remember my way around. Do you know where the house is? Yeah, if you just go up that road, a couple of miles, it's the house before the crossroads. You can't miss it. Oh, well, that's lovely. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't catch your names. My name's Mary Blackwell. Oh, mine's Harry Price, and uh, this is my wife, Susanna. But you can call me Suze. Everyone else does. Well, thank you again. Ah, oh, she seemed nice. I don't know. I don't really trust new faces around here. Especially people we know nothing about. You can't go around trusting just anyone, can you? Well? Well what? Well, what happened? What's the town like? What are the people like? Uh, actually, they're a, they're a bit odd. How do you mean, odd? Well, I don't know. They're just sort of, well, odd. Don't go into too much detail, will you? Well, they just make me feel really uncomfortable. Unwelcome, really. Did you see the way they looked at me when I got out of the car? No. Ooh, it gave me the creeps. This whole place is a bit creepy, really. Who knows why your grandfather lived here? Did you find out where his house was? Yes, it's about two miles down there. Let's hope the people at the other end of the village are a bit more friendly, a bit more normal.
Afternoon, Harry. How's things? Oh, same old, same old. You know how it is. <laughs> How's life treating you, then? Yeah, can't complain. Say, who's that family you were talking to earlier? I saw you talking to the older woman. Oh, some relatives of Terry's, I think. Oh, yeah. What did they want? They're a bit late for the funeral. What did they say? They come to check out his house. Ain't they going to put it on the market? I don't reckon they'll sell it, though. Yeah, not much interest in a small place like this. Don't really want you faces coming here. Hmm. So, what do you think of Terry's family? Don't trust them? I don't know. I don't really trust anybody I just met. Still, they'll be gone in a couple of days. Maybe sooner. <laughs> Let's hope so, eh? Yeah. Anyway, best be off. Can't keep the missus waiting. OK, then. Oh, I'll be down the haunt later on. You gonna come down? No, I gotta be up early. Um, tomorrow, maybe. All right, fair enough. See you later. <laughs> Well, here we are. It's cold in here, isn't it? Don't they have heating out in the country? Well, the place has been empty for two weeks. You can't expect them to keep heating in an old house once somebody's... Um, well, anyway. Let's get the suitcases out of the car and then we'll do something about lighting the fire. Well, there's only two bedrooms, so I think Sam and I will take this one. Was this Grandpa's room? Well, it's a long time since I've been here, but yes, I think this is his room. Right, let's get on then. Where shall we start? Well, I'll start on the dresser. You and Sam start looking through the wardrobe. Look at this. Where did you get that? In the wardrobe, where do you think? Whose is it? It was my mother's. Do you mean Granny Helen, the one who left you and Grandpa when you went to boarding school? Yes, it was very strange. I just came home from school one summer holidays and she'd upped and left. I thought she'd taken everything with her. Didn't realise my father had kept anything. Can I keep it? It's so beautiful. Yes, I suppose there's no harm in keeping it. When did you last see Grandpa? Oh, not since I was a little girl. I phoned him and I've written a couple of times, but I don't think I've properly seen him since I was about eight. Why was that? Well, I went off to boarding school when I was eight. Oh, I hated it there. Couldn't wait to leave. So as soon as I was 16, I did. I went off to the city. That's where I met your father. Why have we visited here before? It's a fairly long drive, I know, but we could have found time to come. I never knew Grandpa, not in the flesh anyway. You know, your grandfather used to read this book to me when I was a child. It was my absolute favourite. I made him read it to me every night. <laughs> What's that about? Well, it's more a collection of Scandinavian folk tales, I suppose. It was more the pictures that interested me. I thought they were lovely, but your grandfather was so good at telling stories, he used to bring everything alive. Wonderful stories like The Honest Penny, The Tabby Cat, who was such a glutton, King Solomon's Cat. Lots of stories about cats, then. <laughs> yes, I suppose there are. This one always upset me, though. Not that your grandfather would ever read it to me, but I did read it one day when he was out at work. What's it about? It's called Tor's Daughter at Ronge. I think it was actually from a Swedish folk song or something. 
Although it upset me, it also helped me to understand God and Christianity through the evil in mankind. It's fundamentally a tale of redemption, you know, an eye for an eye. Will you read it to me? No, not tonight, dear. It's getting late and you should be getting ready for bed. Maybe some other day. Now I think I understand why your grandfather never read it to me. He was a good man, your grandfather. Right. You'd better go and get cleaned up. It's late. Okay, Mum. Mrs. Blackwell? In a sense, uh, I expect you're looking for my mum. Oh, you are, Mum? We have a visitor. This is... Sorry, I didn't catch your name. Michael Howdy. And you are? Alice. And this is my mum, Mary. Thank you, Alice. I think I can speak for myself. Now, you run along to bed. It's getting late. Good night, Mr. Howdy. Good night, Mum. So, Mr. Howdy, what can I do for you? Ah, uh, sorry. Yes, um... Michael Howdy, Reverend Michael Howdy, I'm the local vicar. I heard that some new people had arrived in town and I thought I would come and say hello and just, well, welcome to you all. That's very nice, thank you. I heard from Tom Hopkins, the landlord at the Smuggler's Haunt, that three people had moved in and I can see that you're staying in Terry's old house. Yes, uh, the news certainly travels fast in Maiden's Hollow. <laughs> it certainly does, it's a very small place. I. I I believe that you didn't get quite the welcome you expected from the locals. It wasn't the warmest of welcomes. Oh dear, I'm sorry about that. They're often a little bit odd when they see a new face, but when they warm to you, I'm sure they'll like you a lot. Honestly, I, I believe that you're related to Terry. Yes, I'm his daughter. Alice and Sam, my, my son, they're his grandchildren. Well, were his grandchildren. Oh, I see. Yes, we've come here to clear the house. We're well, not quite sure what I'm going to do with it, sell it or what. Yet yeah, it's, uh, it's all a bit soon. Yes, I understand. Well, it was a real pity that you couldn't have made the funeral. I myself conducted the service this morning. Yes, I would love to have been here. Sadly, I couldn't get here till this afternoon. Did you know my father well? Oh, I know him particularly well, yes, indeed. I guess it goes with the job. <laughs> Um, oh, I'd love to hear more about him. Well, I should love to tell you more about him. Listen, what are you doing tomorrow evening? Well, as far as I know, nothing. Well, why don't you come for dinner and then you can tell us all about him? Oh, great, I'd love that. Thank you very much. And perhaps I can find out a little bit more about you at the same time. Shall we say uh, about eight? Perfect. Eight o'clock it is then. OK, I'll see you tomorrow then. Great, thank you very much. Well, good night and God bless.
every day I think of you. And you should have seen her. Oh, she was beautiful. She was really beautiful. I don't know what to think. Maybe I'm going crazy. I wish you could have seen it. Alice, are you awake? It's gone 8.30. Sort of. Just getting up. Well, Sam and I are off into town now. I've got to get some bits for dinner tonight. We thought we might go for a walk across the fields afterwards. I assume you're not going to be joining us then. I did try to wake you, but you were sound asleep. Did you? Yes, well, it's your own fault for staying up late reading or whatever it was you've been doing, especially after that long drive yesterday. Sorry, I didn't realise. Well, we're off now anyway, so don't you go laying in too long. We'll be back about 12. OK, I'll see you both later. Hello there, young man. I'm afraid you won't get much out of him. He doesn't like talking to strangers. Ah, well, I'm sure if you head inside, my husband might have some sweets for you. That is, if your mummy doesn't mind you having sweets before lunch. Ah, there's a sweet kid you've got there. Oh yes, he can be. Uh, what's his name? Oh, I'm sorry. My name's Mary Blackwell. That's my son, Sam. My daughter, Alice, has been very lazy and she's still in bed. <laughs> well, I'm Kate. My husband, John, and I, we own this shop. Oh, well, that's good. I, I'm actually here looking for something for dinner for this evening. I've, I've invited over the Reverend Howdy. Oh, well, you've definitely come to the right place. So, if you don't mind me asking, uh, what brought you to our sleepy little village? Well, it was actually my father. Hello, young man. I suppose she said you could have some sweets, did she? OK, we've got uh, flying saucers, licorice. We've got boot laces, uh, chocolate mice, cola cubes. Yeah, that one. Cola cubes? OK. Here we go. Oh, you can take more than that. Go on. There you go. That's better. So what's your name, then? Uh, Sam. Sam. OK. So, uh, you're not here all by yourself, are you? So, who are you staying with in the village? Uh, my mum, Mary. All oh, right. Have you got a teenage girl with you? So what's her name? Uh, she's my sister, Alice. Oh, uh, okay. So where are you folks from? 
How are you two getting on? Oh, we're doing just fine. We're bonding, aren't we, Sam? Alice? Alice, are you up yet? Yes, Mother. Why wouldn't I be? Are you still in bed? Have you got dressed yet? Do you know what the time is? I am dressed. I'm coming up to check on you. I'm coming in. I'm oh, sorry, darling. I thought you were still in bed. No, I've been up for ages. Have you had any breakfast? No, oh, I didn't feel hungry. Well, you really should have something. It's not good to start the day without breakfast. Why don't you come down and join me and Sam when you're finished? OK, give me a couple of minutes to finish. Do you reckon this is Michael's church? Well, it's the only one in the village, so I guess it must be. Can we have a look around inside the grounds? Well, just make sure it hasn't been locked up for the night. gravestone, like the others. There's no information or even a name on it. I don't know. Maybe it's somebody who's died recently, just haven't got round to doing a proper gravestone. Well, why hasn't anybody at least written the person's name on the cross? That's what they do in the church near us. I've no idea. You'll have to ask the Reverend when he comes round for dinner tonight. Ooh, that reminds me. You've got to get back. have got lots to do and you'll be here in a couple of hours. Come on, we better go. I'm so glad you could make it. Please call me Michael. Oh, Michael. Oh, I see you bought something to drink. Oh, I'm afraid it's only a bottle of claret. Oh, that would be lovely, but you know, you really didn't need to. Well, it's the least I could do after you put to so much trouble. Mm, that smells really wonderful. Do come in. Let me take your coat. Thank you very much indeed.
It's Alice, isn't it? Well, I have to say, you're looking absolutely wonderful this evening. Thank you. Bloody mice. It's, um, all right, I suppose.
I am sorry I couldn't stay any longer because I have to be up at 6.30 in the morning to prepare for the service. I hope you understand. Oh, of course I understand, and there's no need to apologise. And I hope we shall see you there. Oh, yes, you can guarantee it. Thank you once again for a wonderful evening and a delicious meal. You're welcome. It's been nice having the company. And we'll be there tomorrow, front row centre. Well, I shall bid you good night. And good night to you as well. What shall we sing? Oh, I don't know. You choose. You always seem to pick the right one. Are you all right, Reverend? I'm fine. I just didn't get much sleep last night. I don't know why. I wasn't tired. Well, you don't seem to have done a very good job getting ready this morning. Did you have breakfast? I am absolutely fine. I just didn't get much sleep, and I wasn't hungry this morning. So I skipped breakfast. Give me a little time, and I shall be OK. I assure you, by 8.30 I shall be as right as rain. I just need a little rest, so if you would kindly go outside and play some opening music, I shall be out in 15 minutes. Oh, very well. I shall see you in 15 minutes, but you would tell me if there was anything wrong, wouldn't I mean, you? you? You'd be the first, I'd tell.
Good morning all, it's good to see you all here in the house of God and today's sermon will be on temptation. The sermon is read from James chapter 1 verses 13 to 18. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil. Nor does he tempt anyone, but each one is tempted when, by his own evil desire, he is dragged away and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers. Every good and perfect sin gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly light, who does not change like shifting shadows. Um, uh, no, sorry, no, hang on. When he chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind and first fruits of all he created, uh, that the Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should, should come to repentance. He wills for us to know the word of truth. Tem temptation leads men into a world of darkness and sin, not of God. Um, Mrs. Hoggett, please. Hymn number 13, Praise My Soul. Potatoes are frozen into rocks by the time we get there. Still, it was another lovely service by Reverend Howdy. He always does a nice sermon. Although, I must say he seemed rather unprepared today. Forgot a lot of his words, didn't he? Did he? I didn't notice. Did you, Harry? Hmm? Hello, Harry. Are you there? Hmm? Honestly, it's like he's half asleep. Lost in your own little world. <sighs> Harry, do you fancy a drink later? Oh, I suppose I could spare a couple of hours in my busy schedule. Here, yeah, John, uh, I've got mice in my kitchen. I don't suppose you've got anything to kill the little buggers, have you? Yeah, I should have some traps that'll help you. I'll drop them around later if you like. Beautiful day. This little village is really starting to grow on me. It's a shame we've got to go back tomorrow, but I really can't take any more time off work. Can we take a walk through the woods? I don't think so, dear. There's still an awful lot of packing and clearing up to do back at the house. Please, Mother, you promised we could. I'm sorry, but 
There's just not enough hours in the day to do everything that we'd like. Oh, all right then. You go and have another wander off by yourself. I did promise after all. Sam and I can cope. Are you sure? Yes, go on. Go off and enjoy yourself. Thank you.
stand there all day. Come and help me with this. But you went away. I never went away. I've always been here. But you were killed in a car crash. You are silly. I was never in any car crash. I didn't go anywhere. I think you're going a bit crazy you old age. Now come and help me with this. What are you doing, Mr. Howden? She's looking for someone. Have either of you two guys seen Michael today? Do you know what? Come to think of it, we haven't, have we, Harry? No, no, not yet. But it's not like Michael to miss a sermon. He never misses a sermon. In all of my years of coming here, he's never not turned up. Not even once. Maybe I should go over and help her. Mm. Oh, it looks like she could do with a hand. OK, do. So, where's Michael? I, I, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? No, he's never failed to turn up for church before, never. Well, have you tried uh, calling him? Well, of course I have, several times, but there's no answer. Something terrible must have happened to him. He's never failed to turn up for church before, never. Something really, really awful must have happened. Maybe, maybe he was involved in an accident. Maybe he's dead. I tell you what. Tom, John and I will go over to his place and find out what the problem is. You go out there, tell them he's phoned in sick uh, and he's really sorry he can't take the service today. But, but you wait here in case he turns up later, okay? I'm sure he's absolutely fine. There's probably a perfectly good reason for this. Don't worry yourself. Trust me. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? I have some bad news for you all. I've just got off the phone to the Reverend Michael, and he's informed me to pass on the very regrettable news that he's unable to take the service today. He's informed me that he has, unfortunately and unexpectedly, come down with a rather serious case of something he doesn't know what. Anyway, I will try my best to carry on the service without him. May we please open our hymn books to page 104?
Well, this does seem really odd. What do you think could possibly have happened? I mean, possibly quite serious. I mean, it's just not like Michael to ever miss a sermon. How serious? I really don't know. John, I think you and I should go over to his place and check things out. I mean, it's the, it's the only place he can be. He hasn't got a car or anything. So I seriously doubt he could be anywhere else. Look, I, I'm sure it's nothing as serious as that. I mean, he's probably ill. He's probably tucked up in bed. As soon as we get over there, the sooner we'll be back. Look, I promise you, we'll only take a couple of hours at the most. OK, but please hurry back. The sooner I know what's going on, the sooner I can stop worrying. We should get Tom en route to help us search. dead wife. She's in Isabel.
Oh, well, that was a waste of time. Absolutely nothing. Well, I need to go open the pub. I can't leave the customers waiting. Well, I'm going to head back to the church to see if Amy's heard anything about Michael. Seriously, though, John, where the hell is he? God knows. I just don't know what to make of all this. I mean, we've searched his house and there's nothing there. I just don't know where he could have got to. I mean, he hasn't got a car or anything, so anywhere he's gone, he'd be on foot. I mean, it's not like he's gone to live in the forest, is it? <laughs> I don't know. The sooner we find him, the better. Going back to what Harry was saying the other night, you don't think he's got himself into any kind of trouble, do you? Usual. Sam? Sam? What are you doing? What are you doing running in like this? Sam? Sam, darling, are you all right? Have you hurt yourself? Did you fall over in the woods? Sam, darling, I can't help you if you won't let me in. Sam? Nothing. Um, say, would you like another pint? <laughs> That's a bloody stupid question. Uh, same again, Tom. Scott, you live near the Reverend, don't you? So, what of it? Oh, no, no reason. Um, when was the last time you saw him? I've been all the way back to this morning. All oh, right. And what was he doing? Don't know. Kept stumbling out of his house. He was all over the place. They're pretty pissed up. Woke me up, I tell you. He staggered his way to the tree somewhere. Looked like he was heading towards Gorgon Woods. I'd imagine he spent the rest of the day passed out over there. Why do you care, anyway? No, no reason. Um, thank you, Scott. You've been really helpful. Tom, are you going to come with me? Uh, I've only just opened up the pub. All right, look, well, when I find him, I'll come back here. <laughs> if you find him. Tom, I'll find him. What's the matter? It's my... it's my Alice! Well, what is it? What's the matter with her? She's dead. Dead? What do you mean, dead? That Michael, he's murdered her. Mary, I'm sorry. I don't understand. How did this happen? Sam... Sam said he saw him take her into the woods. <laughs> Sam... Do you think you can tell me everything that happened? Sam, please. Tell me what's happened. Mary, I'm going to go up to the church and get Harry and get some people together. Will you be okay here for a few minutes? Mary, if you're right, I assure you, justice will be done.
Hey, John, what are you doing here? I thought you'd still be down the uh, smugglers. Any news about Michael? Amy here says uh, she hasn't heard from him. Well, that's right. I've heard it several times, but no answer. I've tried everyone out of the Look, Amy, do you think you can give Harry and I a second or two alone? Well, all right, but you won't let me know if there's any news. Yes, of course I will. What is it, John? What have you heard? No, Harry, we may have a big problem on our hands. What sort of problem? That young girl, Alice, she may have been murdered. And I have reason to believe that Michael is responsible. What? Are you serious? How could that have happened? I just bumped into Mary in the village, and she told me that Sam was out there in the woods and saw the whole thing with his own two eyes. Now, he wouldn't talk to me. I think he's in shock. I don't believe you. Jesus. I don't believe it myself. Harry, what do we do? Look, we need to get everyone together. We need to search for Alice's body and then go and find Michael. Perhaps then we'll get to the bottom of exactly what's happened. Okay. I'll get Amy to ring the bell and summon everybody to church. Okay. And Harry, what if it's true? Will it be like what happened last time? Let's take one thing at a time, eh? Amy, do you reckon you can ring the church bell, please? We need to get everyone together. Whatever for? It's about Michael. It's really important. I'll give you the details when everyone's here. Ladies and gentlemen, please may I have your attention. I've heard word that something terrible has happened and the perpetrator may be in the village. Now, before we can take any action, we must establish if there's any truth in the accusations that have been brought before me. Doc Robbins, uh, will you accompany me to Ash Tree House? There's a very distraught woman there that needs your help. Sadly, I fear her daughter may be beyond your help. John, will you also accompany me to Ash Tree House so that you can actually speak to Sam this time and establish exactly what's happened? Amy, do you think you can keep Mary company? May I please ask that all of you wait here until my return? I brought the doctor here to tend to you, and Amy here will keep you company, okay? All right, old chap. Do you want to tell me everything that happened? Mother asked me to go and get Alice, because we were getting ready to leave, and I went over to the woods, and that's where I saw him do it. Saw who, exactly? Michael, the man from the church, the reverend. Thank you, Sam. Do you think you can tell me the whereabouts of these woods? The, the ones up by the track, the ones next to the fence, up over there. Thank you, Sam. You've been very brave. It sounds like it happened up in Gorgon's Woods. Right, let's get back to the church and tell the others. OK, Mary. I'm going to give you a little something to help the pain. It's a small sedative to help you calm down.
Ladies and gentlemen, I have the unenviable task of reporting the terrible news that a young girl has been murdered. Now, before we can take any action, we must establish the facts and confirm our worst fears. Who, may I ask, is responsible? Let's find a body first, eh? Now, everyone, Tom and John are going to go into the woods with Sam to see if they can find a body. Another group, including me, will see if Michael's left town. I need another group to search the town centre and look for Michael. Okay, I need a few men to accompany my group and a similar number to search for Michael. Who'd like to accompany me? And who'd like to search for Michael? Okay, we've already searched his house and he isn't there. So if you guys can go out and search in sheds, in barns and in the woods, I'll have a word with the boatman and see that he hasn't already taken him out. You need to head out to Gorgon's Wood. Take Sam with you so he can show you where Alice is and we can confirm if what's been said is true. Everyone can be back at the church in an hour's time. I'll have to stop off at the horn and get Tom's help. All right, old chap. Do you think you can show me exactly where Alice is? All right, let's go. She's over here. Do you think it was him? Can you take this? Uh, Alice Blackwell. Take her in the back of the church. How can you say he's responsible? Michael! I saw him do it! He hit her! He hit her so hard she didn't move anymore! Are you so sure it was Michael? I'm afraid so. All of his actions leading up to the crime for him is the major suspect. I've no doubt it's Michael. Then he must be punished. Doing this terrible crime, he must be punished. Wait for it. Come on, guys. Let's call the authorities. Get some outside intervention. The next town's not that far away. Well, at least let's consider it before it's too late. We've dealt with these things before. Why leave it to the outside and get the police involved? There's no justice in that. He's right. We can take care of this ourselves. Everyone here knows what needs to be done. Travis, did you find Michael? No, we didn't, sir. We looked all over and made Nolo not a trace of him. The others are out now, searching the farms. Did you speak to the boatmaster? Yep. He hasn't taken anyone out all day. <sighs> Did you search his house? No. He told us not to bother with that. Well, I know that was several hours ago. I mean, if he's not in the town centre and he didn't leave by the boat service, well, he's almost certainly there. Come on, let's be quick.
Michael, you in there? Michael? Somebody better go around the back. up there. That window. I think it's his bedroom. I told you it was up there. Hey, Michael. Come and let us in. If you don't, we're going to have to kick the door down. Ah, oh, the hell with this. Let's just kick the door again. Let's face it, he's not coming down, is he? Come on. I think he's got something heavy against the door. And I think he's probably got the deadbolt on too. Who's got the axe? Terry! Have a go at this. Why, Michael? Why? Whatever possessed you to undertake something so heinous? So hideous? Never in a million years. We all trusted you, Michael. Everyone, not a single person had a bad word to say. All these years that I've known you, Michael. Why? Why now all of a sudden? She brought a dark cloud over this village. You should be ashamed. You disgust me, you really do. You know what we have to do? You've left us no choice.
nothing, my dear. You come and sit back down on the settee. wakes with eyes a wide, prepares to cark a church to ride. Proud Karen sits upon her bed, plaiting her golden locks about. Proud Karen dons her silken robe, a work of fifteen maidens so. Proud Karen dons her blue cloak bright. She rides to church now, it is light. She rides around a giant tree, now three herdsmen does she see. They say to her, come be our wife. Or thou shalt forfeit thy young life. Yes, my, yes, my, yes, my.
We may have a big problem on our hands. What sort of problem? to do. Buy your movie today, Arzura.com.